This episode of Techno Buffalo is brought to you by Netflix. Thank you guys for tuning in. This is Rettinger's Rants. It's the show where I rant and rave from anything in the world of technology. I'm your host, John Rettinger. Now, this week, we're talking SIM cards. Nano SIM, micro SIM, regular SIM, too many to keep track of. It makes it impossible to know which one goes in which phone, what adapters you're going to need. Let's go ahead and get ranting. <laughs> Before the iPhone 4 launch really had one SIM card size. It was standard, it was used in every phone, and it made those GSM folks happy. Uh, SIM card is what's used in GSM phones, so in the US that'd be AT&T and T-Mobile to put all your phone number on. Essentially it was your phone on a card. You could take that SIM, you could pop it into any phone, and suddenly your phone number was on there. So now any uh, carrier that has an LTE network uses a SIM card, but back then it was only those two and life was simple. We review phones here at Techno Buffalo and everyone wanted to try a new phone, I'd pop out my SIM card, I'd put it in a new phone, and I was good to go. Then the iPhone 4 came along and Apple said, you know what, we want to save room, we're going to create a micro SIM. It's got the same size contacts as regular size SIM card, we're cutting out the plastic, we want to make sure every millimeter, micrometer, nanometer is used economically. Okay, fine, we got it. Micro SIM became the standard for most phones. It was adopted by Samsung, it was adopted by Nokia, it was adopted by HTC, and then that was just the new standard. It was great, everything was fine with the world. You could pop in a micro SIM in any phone. If you wanted to use an adapter, you could do so. There were SIM cutters available. All you had to do was take a SIM cutter and a regular size SIM, cut it, and you could use that regular size SIM hole as an adapter, and everything worked out perfectly. Then Apple said, you know what? We want to save a few more millimeters. Now we're going to create nano SIMs with the iPhone 5, make it nearly impossible to take your SIM card from an iPhone 5 and put it directly into another phone. You need to get another kind of adapter. Now I understood the move from regular SIM to micro SIMs. So there's a decent amount of plastic and wasted space on that SIM card. But going from micro to nano is really a matter of millimeters. And it seems to do nothing more than make it difficult for people to go from an iPhone to another device. But there's a way around it. You can pick up any myriad of adapters, but you gotta make sure you're getting the right one that goes from nano to micro. Or what if you have an older phone, then you have to go from nano to regular. It becomes a frustrating mess. And in this industry, when we test a ton of phones, you never know what SIM card's gonna be in each device. Let's get a standard. Let's agree on one and stick with it. I don't care if my phone is that much thicker, that much wider, so you don't have to have different size SIM cards. I don't think this was an issue of Apple trying to save space like they did with the move from regular to micro. I think this was just them trying to make things difficult. So maybe nano is going to become the new standard. Then we'll go micro nano. Or maybe they'll create a new SIM standard. It's only going to work with Apple phones and you can never switch SIM cards to another device. This is problematic though if you're traveling. I imagine you take your iPhone 5 and you want to go abroad to Europe, South America, Middle East, Africa, Antarctica, Australia. There are some other continents. South Central America. It's not a continent. But it can become quite difficult. If carriers don't have an iPhone there, you're going to be out of luck. You can't get a nano SIM. You're going to have to get a, some sort of cutter, bring it with you, cut that SIM card, and put it in. And then you have carriers like T-Mobile that don't have the iPhone. They're still offering micro SIMs. The whole world of SIM cards blows my mind and makes me crazy mad. Now, I know it's a tiny little thing, and everyone's going to say first world problems and all that kind of business, but it is really annoying. And it's another sign of Apple getting more and more proprietary. What do you guys think? Am I way off base? Am I a cranky old man? Or do you agree? Do you hate trying to buy adapters or keep track of different phones? If you switch phones quite frequently, you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. It is maddening. So let me take a minute to talk about something that's not maddening, something that's incredibly easy. Our friends and sponsors at Netflix. Netflix streams TV shows and movies directly to your home, saving you time, money, and hassle. As a Netflix Unlimited member, you can instantly watch TV episodes and movies streaming directly to your PC, Mac, or right to your TV with your Xbox 360 or Wii console. Watch as many movies as you want, anytime you want. Cancel anytime. Check out Netflix. You can stream all kinds of TV shows and movies right to your television set, your mobile device, your tablet, anything you want. It makes it super easy. Netflix is the only way to go. For a limited time, get a free 30-day trial. Go to netflix.com slash buffalo. Get your free 30-day trial. If you're in the UK, go to netflix.co.uk slash buffalo. Or if you're in Ireland, netflix.ie slash buffalo. And you can go ahead and get your free 30-day trial. So this new SIM standards, am I crazy? Am I wrong? I want to hear your thoughts on it. I want one SIM card size for every phone. It's enough that we got to deal with the different phone adapter for different phones. Almost everybody except for Apple has gone micro USB. Why can't we just get SIM cards to agree? And maybe if we can adjust around a SIM card standard, maybe there's a chance for peace in the rest of the world. I'm John Rettinger. Thanks for watching. Check us out at technobuffalo.com for the latest and greatest tech news. I'll see you in the next video.